Hey guys, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces and today I want to talk to you about whether or not you should choose the RX 5600 XT or the 5700 non-XT model. These are both two very good cards but I want to break it down into gaming performance, mining performance and just my overall thoughts. So first off, let's go ahead and look at the gaming performance. Now here's the cards that I'm working with right now. So we got the Azrock Challenger and the Sapphire Pulse 5600 XT. On the left hand side you're going to see the 5700 and on the right hand side you're going to see the 5600 XT even though it says generic VGA. Stock performance versus stock performance the 5700 increases the overall score about 6.7 percent or 6 percent. The graphics score increased 13 percent over the 5600 XT. This is a 1080p benchmark. So at 1080p, the 5700 does win, but the 5600 XT is a good gaming card at 1080p medium high settings depending on the game itself. So don't count it out yet. Now switching over to Time Spy, the 5700 gap over the 5600 XT gets cut to 1.7 overall and 1.9 about 2% on the graphics so the, the the point spread isn't really that much looking at the pricing you can get a RX 5600 XT for around 300 bucks either 289 all the way up to uh, 320 bucks depending on the model or variant that you choose so let's say 300 if, if we include shipping and all that good stuff and then the RX 5700 is around 330 to 350 maybe a little bit higher depending on the model or variant you get as well. So that's an extra 30 to 40 bucks to get two more gigabytes of memory, GDDR6, and a card that's good at decent at 1440p, good at 1080p. This card's going to be good at 1080p and a little bit of 1440p depending on the title and graphic settings. So the question that you're going to need to ask yourself from a gaming perspective is what are the games you're playing at what resolution 1080p or 1440p and how much uh, is either one of these in your budget? Because if you can go with the 5600 XT and take that extra 40 bucks and put it towards a better uh, motherboard, memory, CPU, or SSD, that might be the better option for you. Now personally, I prefer the 5700 because of one simple fact. When AMD released the 5600 XT, they had to do an immediate vBIOS update because they saw that Nvidia did the price cuts uh, with the 2060KO and while they were intending to originally compete with the 1660 Super because of what Nvidia did it forced them to basically stock out of the box overclock this guy to its limits and that's exactly what it is it's already at its limits when you get this card and you update the vBIOS which your manufacturer should provide um, it's gonna be at the maximum that it could possibly go already 1820 is the max core 1860 is the max mem Using the more power tool is not going to do anything for you. Trying to overclock is going to lock the core to 300 megahertz, and the card is going to be handicapped severely. So don't even bother. Don't even. It's no point. The 5700, on the other hand, I have plenty of settings or configuration. As you can see here on screen, I got some for Ethereum Undervolt, uh, non-XT stable, stock, and then I have what's called Tech Odin. Now what I did is I uh, of course watch Gamers Nexus and uh, Bearded Hardware uh, and Steve from Gamers Nexus plugged in some parameters for their LN2 overclocking and benchmarks. Now what I did is I watched carefully, I looked at the temperature threshold of my card and I fine tune what's good for the card and what's not because you don't want to increase the voltage if you're not going to be under significant cooling and I wasn't I'm on air cooling so I was able to take their configuration 
put it bring it down a little bit to fit but then i'm getting rx 5700 xt and beyond level of performance with this card that only cost me 330 whereas with this card i can't next let's move on to mining performance both are good cards the asrock crew could have done a better job with the GPU because I had to modify it and if you want to know what I'm talking about I have the video I will have the video linked in the description but the thermals out of the box for the ASRock card was poor to say the least and I had to modify the card in order to get better performance not only for the memory but for the GPU core now I will have these reddit threads of the RX 5600 XT and the non XT 5700 linked in the description below but as of time of filming Ethereum is the most profitable coin to mine at this present point in time. And if we take the hash rate of the 5700, which the highest I can hit is about 53.4, 53.5 at 115 watts, that's going to net me 88 cents a day profit. If I look at the 5600 XT, it's only going to net me 65 cents profit because I can only hit 40.4 mega hash. Now, that's a bit of a handicap in itself because other people are able to get 42 to 43 mega hash out of this card. But the difference between me and them is my card comes with Micron memory while theirs came with Samsung. There's no way to tell when you buy into these cards that what memory it comes with, unfortunately. So you want to hope that you get Samsung memory because in my eyes, the Samsung memory performs better than Micron, even though they're supposed to be the same GDDR6 performance bandwidth, the whole nine yards. Mining aspect, this card will not go above 40.4, 40.6. So better mining performance, better gaming performance, but at a $40 to $50 premium over the 5600 XT. I can still see this card having great use cases, especially for gamers that are just going to be gaming at 1080p and not even mining or doing anything else. But to me, the 5700 in this particular case is the winner, not only because it performs stock uh, better out of the box. I mean, let's say 2 two to 3% uh, better, depending on the title, than the 5600 XT but you're able to, to extend that lead more because uh, you can do a VBIOS flash and then you can use the more power tool. Whereas you can do a VBIOS flash on this, but you're still gonna be limited by the same software limitations AMD had placed to lock the card from being overclocked beyond what they had set. Whereas this one, the only thing that's holding you back is your thermal, li uh, thermal limits. So your GPU hotspot, your VRMs, your memory, all that good stuff. I will have a video for how to force flash your V BIOS, uh, like an XT BIOS onto a non XT, but do it at your own risk, please. I do not assume any liability. Uh, you, most people would get a subsystem mismatch ID. I have helped people flash their cards. A couple people also blank, blacked out their screen, or they they would reboot and wouldn't load. There are ways to fix it, uh, such as using an, another GPU or using a computer with an integrated GPU and just flashing the BIOS back, but always make sure you make a backup of your stock BIOS before you do anything, including upgrading the BIOS, because some of these cards shipped with the original BIOS, which would make it compete with the 1660 Super, but AMD and manufacturers, as you can see on your screen, released a new version. Always make a backup of your original first, uh, just to you know cover your ass, so to speak. But out of all this information that I provided in this video, I hope you got at least pointed in the right direction for where you want to go to, to help you make a decision on which card I want to go with and all that good stuff. If you did get some useful information out of this video, please hit the like button on the way out. Again, I will have everything, uh, the mining performance and everything linked in the description below. Video about how to update the VBIOS or Force Flash or uh, 5700 or pretty much any card. It works for, for any card, but you just got to make sure you got a VBIOS that's compatible. And then as well, my video on the more power tool and soft power play tables. And that's pretty much it, guys. So I got to get to work and I thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.